could be difficult, then again could be fun. The underpainting should not have any secrets left for you after this video. Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. I had a thought of showing you the creative process behind one painting from the first brush stroke until the very last in real time. Now of course this will not be possible to do in one video so I thought that I will break down the usual steps that I take in order to create a painting and in this very first video we are going to concentrate on the underpainting. To illustrate this I chose a canvas that is a little bigger than the small scale paintings that I showed you in my last demos but still smaller than the real big canvases that I've worked on. So it's something of a compromise that will have enough space, I believe, in order to um, go enough into details and showing you still not too huge in order to, to take up maybe like 10 or 15 videos to get it done, right? As to the topic of this painting, I would want it to be as diverse as possible and show you a wide palette of different well, techniques, brushworks and themes. So I would want to stay with those types of paintings where you have half landscape, half a portrait. And um, the inspiration for today will be one photograph of Georgina from Further and Hay. For those of you who are not familiar with her work, Georgina is an artist and a weaver who is based in the northeast of Scotland and she creates the most beautiful scarves that she hand weaves herself in her studio. She is a real artisan of her craft. All her textiles are made really locally, not only because she's weaving them in Scotland, but also because all the yarn is coming from the British Isles and she chooses traditional mills to work with. And if you look through her designs, and I will link, of course, um, her website below, you will see that everything is so much inspired by the Scottish nature, the patterns, the colours, the way the stitching is made is very nature inspired. And this is really what I love about her work. And of course, when she promotes her work, uh, because she also has an Instagram account that I will obviously link below as well, you see this inspiration not only in her designs but also in the way that she is illustrating her world really and the way that she's taking the photographs so everything is really focused on the beauty that that Scotland's nature is and um, the Scots pines, heather, how the landscapes and also the colors transform throughout the seasons. So I found a photograph that really would work well as a painting and this is what is going to be the base for today's creation. I feel like this is a very interesting one to do as a painting because it will give me the opportunity to show different um, techniques, different challenges. We have obviously this row that is made of a thousand pebbles, so this will be an interesting one. We have the detail in the tartan scarf. You have um, different types of grasses on the left and on the right, so we can do a deep dive into that. Then we might be able to talk about how to manage the transition between the mountains and the mist and the horizon. I think it's a very interesting painting and I hope that you will like how I do a step-by-step -step, uh, demo on this one. And now let's get to the underpainting. Now really quickly, maybe for those of you who might not be familiar with this technique, uh, the underpainting or the imprimatura, as the Italians called it, is a technique that allows us to obtain an initial stain on the ground that is the canvas. And this presents us with many advantages. First of all, it helps us with the cohesion of the paint and the canvas. So were you to go in with a well, with paint mixed in with medium directly onto the canvas, it would not age well. So in order to help the pigments to adhere to the canvas, it is often advised to have an initial stain that is made primarily out of the paint, very much diluted with turpentine, so that you have something uniform like this. Uh, but why stop here? When you can do the underpainting at the same time, 
because it is obviously a help for you, it is a guide for you to paint upon so that you know where everything will be. It helps establishing values without being too much preoccupied by colors and getting the right colors right from the beginning. You're mostly focusing here on the color values, so the highlights, the shadows and the middle tones. And many painters actually believe that while you can have some margin of errors within finding the exact right color and the right tone, when painting a landscape, for instance, or a portrait, what has the most impact on the credibility of a painting is the relation of the color values. Uh, so this is something that you would have to get right, right from the beginning and definitely by the end of the painting. And this is exactly what helps us do it without having the different colors muddled in together. And, um, and finally, what might not be an argument for everyone, but what I personally appreciate is also the fact that the underpainting allows us to have color cohesiveness, because obviously with oil paints you work in semi-transparent layers, so every layer shines through a little bit. So this technique also allows us to have a uniform undertone for everything that we lay upon. And the point is, of course, not leaving it apparent in any way, but somehow when you build the color, you will have the underpainting, well, tinting in some way, the, the colors that you're laying upon them. So this really helps to establish one color mood, maybe. Now, enough with the theoreticals and let's get to it. Now, as you can see, the canvas is already pre-stained, so I put down a really, really diluted stain of burnt umber and we are now going to paint upon it. Uh, the reason why I am telling you this is because to establish highlights, a lot of painters, where is my color, yeah, um, like to like rub areas off of the initial stain in order to leave them nearly white. Um, but with the stain that is already put on and dry down, I cannot do that. I prefer to pre-stain my different canvases so that I have always one in stock. And um, it's just easier for me to, you know, to keep and um, easier for my workflow. But just be aware that everyone does not do the underpainting in the same way that I'm doing. Me, for instance, to have the highlights, I will have to mix in some titanium white. But this is not the case for everyone. Now, um, I'm picking up another layer of burnt umber and will now have to draw what we see onto the canvas as precisely as I can. I believe that the horizon is a little bit off the middle of the canvas. And we have one, two, three. This is like a perfect third. Where this starts is a perfect third. So let's check two third. Yeah, we're not bad here. Okay, I do believe that the mountain is a little bit flatter maybe than what I've made it look like. So let's correct this. Then we have a layer of woodland here and here that is darker. I'm not getting into the blacks and whites right away. For now I'm just really sketching out with a very diluted burnt umber on my, on my brush. The brushes that I mostly used for this type of work, so for underpaintings, are the flat square ones. I do feel that they are very diverse. You can do fine lines with them, you can block out larger areas and colors, so this is really a very useful tool. Uh, now, the road goes into the middle and then starts becoming quite broad here until the foreground. We have some bigger borders here, right until here. And this is the middle ground that we will get into details later on. 
Now we have Georgina here with the giant scarf that is going down here. Her arm, her head is rather here. I'd say there's still some space left. Maybe it's a bit small. I made it a bit too big. We'll see. And there you go. This is the scarf, her skirt, her arm. Yeah, I definitely made her hat too big. We'll have to make this right. There you have some shadow. You know, I'm not worried if I make wrong decisions here proportionally because while the paint is um, not dried down, you can correct nearly everything. Now here to establish this, I'll just check. I believe this is maybe a third one, two. Yes, this is quite literally one, two, three. Yes, this is a third. Okay, so let's check one, two. So right here. So no, I did not make it well enough. So no, this should be here and this is the road. Okay, this is the road she's standing on and this is where you have the grasses on the right and the mountain coming in and we have to check her proportions. Okay, now we kind of have all the elements that we want to have in the painting and can now focus uh, on details and the values. So, of course, I put the photograph, the initial photograph, into black and white mood so that I'm not distracted by the colors and I can more easily see the different values. This is a very useful tool if you are working off of photographs and you have your phone in hand. So, I'm not quite sure that this is really cheating, but it does help you a lot. Let's start with the darkest shadows. Now we have to mix and put just a little bit of black into it to darken it just enough and we start with the darkest shadows that would be the forest of course not all of it mind but this part here in the middle it gets a little bit um, lighter and you have those individual trees that are most in the foreground and less in the mist that are really really dark. You have a bit here, the bit on the ground is also darker. So this we will need to block in. Um, we have one bit here as well and here. Is this part on the mountain as dark as the trees I believe I believe it is so we will have some parts here wait let's do it so here you have a blotch and then like around her shoulders you have a really dark area as well Now we can move onto the foreground gradually and you have quite a lot of, no we need more black to make this work. We have all the grasses that here are pretty much within the shadow. Right, something like that. I would say a little bit here, mostly here, a bit on the stone, here, and here. Okay, a 
not everything mined. And then we have some kind of spot here as well. And that's about that. Now, on Georgina, where the deepest shadows lie, is directly underneath her, of course, because this is like literally her shadow. Right, and then you have to feather it out because it is the deepest shadow, however it is not um, the case throughout the foreground and we have to bring in some, no maybe not enough, some burnt umber to signify that this is still a shadow, but maybe not as pronounced as directly under her. So we have to be careful that it appears lighter than directly beneath her. Okay. There we go, until the edge of the painting. On the other side, it is a little bit darker here. Maybe here, but not as dark. Okay, this is something in between. Is it? Yeah, pretty much the same value. Up. There you go. And you have to leave this untouched. Yeah, I believe there you go. We have something fairly believable. There you go. And oops. Then progressively when the path fades away into the horizon it becomes it becomes lighter and clearer so if we want to drag out the stain we have to be careful to not overdo it and for it to not become too dark but we have to darken it just a little bit just ever so slightly Right, okay. Now on to, back to Georgina. We also have a large shadow area here where the draping creates a shadow underneath her hand. Now, where were we before the, the card was full? What I was about to tell you is that the, that Georgina's skirt was pretty much the same value as the surroundings, so it does not stand out that much. Right. It will become a little clearer when we establish the shadows within, um, within the skirt. So obviously we have the shadow from the draping, but also the shadow that is cast by the scarf, so this will help us with the outlines. There you go. And it's maybe worth going over the shadows that we've already painted in, but I feel like when it's drying down, it becomes a bit less apparent or I was not maybe thorough enough my first application and we have the shadow underneath her okay um, right now we have to finally get Georgina's head right I'm sorry if, uh, if it is a bit weird that I'm leaning away but I do have a lot of glare from the lamp that is illuminating the canvas and if I lean the other direction you would not be able to see what I'm doing so this is what we've got um, yeah, so, and I know this doesn't look like much 
in the beginning you have to trust the process because it is normal that this pretty much looks like like a child scribble in the beginning we, we are getting there okay no worries we are getting there so once again sorry we need a little bit more black and a little bit more still in the skirt you see when we are going into details like here in the in the draping of her skirt i'm not even sure that this is worth the pain of going through and um, going into details when we're at the stage of an underpainting because we basically need the overall impression and i'm not sure it is necessary per se to um, go into the smallest details like that so i'm still adding a little bit of those but by no way are they are these shadows in the draping precise so it's just is rather a guide to me than really something very accurate and I believe that all we have to do now is maybe fill in the spaces a little bit where we have all those middle tones so that we less have apparent borders between all the elements and it looks a bit more natural but without you know darkening everything too much but if we do we always know I need to clean my brush a little more okay there you go we can always redarken or brighten everything that we need to go brighter or darker but I don't like the outlines that much I prefer to have something a bit more um, homogeneous, let's say. Let's go in with just a smidgen of burnt umber, but just the tiniest bit. Okay. In a really, really light layer because we don't want to darken anything that much just to not have those very very apparent borders in between things so that it becomes more of a painting and less of a drawing if you know what I mean ah the glare is not good I'm sorry guys I will at some point I will have to cover the painting up with my head I'm sorry there's no simple way of doing it I'm trying not to too much okay this is regular painting ASMR here <laughs> I can tell you that okay I think this is a bit better and now we can go on to the highlights and this will make already a little more sense I believe and I very much hope so obviously we have this um, this whole area with this oh this is not enough of a white I might pick up a bigger brush otherwise I will have forever and there you go so if you have some paint running down it's not you don't have to worry there you go because you don't have exact well exact borders anyway and also there is mist going on in this so we do want those transitions to not be extremely sharp and defined right oh, it's getting more and more difficult with the glare that i'm getting from the lamp i'm so sorry well something like this let's say okay we 
you don't have to worry about those brush strokes neither at the moment we don't care remember the idea is simply to have a, a stain this is all we need for now let's see now we have to bring highlights back into the foreground as well and those are mostly the mountain here okay um, we have I wanted to paint in the river but then again I'm telling myself in order to be really precise I have a um, point of orientation with this mountain and I will rather first block in the stone which would be around here and then between those two points it's really easier to estimate where the river is so it would be around here and um, it broadens here and goes into the into the horizon is this a middle tone yes this is not white this won't be white this is not a highlight but the middle of the road for whatever reason I believe it's the stones that are most moist and therefore glistening that are most white so we have them here I was tempted to say that this was rather a highlight but maybe not enough so maybe yeah on the right we do have another highlight so um, here we have some other stones that are catching the light being extra moist don't go away here here and here we don't need to be super precise here once again the idea is to have some guidance in where we will go later on with the color um, we have some highlights here I believe these are different stones and then a bit of the slope of the mountain that is pretty bright as well in here maybe a little bit there and um, yeah we have to muddle the top of the mountain because this is definitely going to be not that not that dark mm. is this part a highlight as well compared to the other mountain ah uh, arguably so let's go with it so here a little bit and a part here and there here and um, that's about that and now we go back to Georgina so the real highlight is of course our blouse and then we have only the side of her arm but not the entire arm a little bit of her back there where the draping is catching the light but not the whole way through so don't paint like the whole blouse in and then we have a bit of the white here in the tartan then a little bit here in the middle and um, the corner of it next to the shadow like here then once again I would say here I believe a bit here and a bit here a little bit here here and here as well as here and here and her hand is pretty much in the highlight as well then we can also block in some minor details in the road because there are some pebbles who are also catching the light do you want to go into this type of detail i'm not sure it's really that useful but let's go with it so we have some 
pebble is here, this will be a useful guide when we go in with a the color then we know where things are more or less and then we have one that is really bright here at the bottom corner. Ah, my mistake, my mistake, no, it is much closer to the black, so I'd say there. And I believe that now we have to redefine things a little bit more, especially here in the shadows that are not dominant enough. So let's go back in a little bit. We have the shadow here and the shadow here. Something rather in between of both here. A little bit more there. This is about the same value here and there. So let's get into this. And then it feathers out a little bit into the distance. And here we should have the same color value as in here, more or less, with this part being a little bit darker still back into into these parts we need a little bit more black here sorry if i randomly am looking into the camera i'm just trying to keep track whether whether it's about to to die off the battery of it okay and we definitely need to darken this this corner if I am seeing it correctly so right a little bit like this with a distinctively darker point here we can darker things a little bit in here as well like there was a bit here and there I'm sorry guys, I had to move you because I was not able to see with the reflection from the lamp on the canvas. So we are at a phase, I believe, where we can start to go a little bit more into detail. We, we have to check whether all the forms are correct. So for instance, we can feather this out a little bit more correct everything that needs correction here get a little bit more movement into the forms so adding a little bit more shadow to um, the undergrowth here right And there we have a much stronger straight line actually and also what I haven't noticed before but it's not only the trees that are in the foreground that are fairly dark or the darkest shadow but we also have those peaks actually in the background only the top of the tree okay here everything is fine more or less okay this is fine oh this there we have a more continuous line actually okay it's a bit more rounded adding a little bit more in here 
but overall I think that we are not too bad on the shadow front. Oh, that sounds ominous, the shadow front. Um, do we need darkening in here? This is the question. And I zoom out. Yes, we do need to go a little darker here. Not an awful lot, but a little bit. So th this shadow underneath Georgina is still the strongest shadow, but we need to darken this one still. And um, we have another strong shadow here in between the pebbles. There you go. This is better, I believe. Do we need to go into the... Yes, we do need to go into the tartan and re-establish some, some shadows here and here. Well, this is not very, very precise. Uh, I think we can do better than that. And we have to maybe smudge this a little more because here the proportions are off and we need to correct this. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm taking both brushes actually and I will be working not simultaneously but in parallel. So we have like a little bit of a highlight going down here and then here this one is all right but then we have to um, go larger, well slimmer here, larger here, slimmer here and then it goes out again Okay, and to delimit the area that we're working with, we re-establish this shadow here. It's nearly as opaque as the one underneath her feet, actually. So, this is where it stops. Okay, now we need a brush for those middle tones. So here, here, and this needs correction. This needs correction. Once again, the darkest shadow. Come on, black, be blacker here, this part and this part, this part, this part, and then we have kind of something in between and this will be tricky. Like here, a little bit here and a little bit there, also here, And here, here, and here. And now we have another highlight here. This is where the fabric goes. Does a little twist and then goes right here. Okay. Here, here, then we have all those middle tones again. Here, uh, here. Well, just laying down the base and then we can um, go darker or lighter 
afterwards but I need to block in the area otherwise I'm not quite sure what I'm doing if I start to detail out right from the beginning. So this is underneath. Okay, now the darker shadows are therefore here, right? And here, and then it starts, and it stops more or less. It goes a little bit darker in here, in here, uh, in here, and in here. Right, then we have one down here and one up here. And we can go maybe a little lighter in between. So let me fetch a little more of the white, like here and here and here, as well as, wait, this is the one. So here a little bit clearer, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter here as well. Here, here. Then we have another border. Wait, 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 what did I do? In between, here, here and here, here. We need to darken this area a little bit more. As well as this one. I feel like this is not enough. And go in here. Okay, this is not bad. This is not bad at all. Let's connect those lines a little further. Okay. And now I just, um, I've just seen that we didn't, we didn't paint in uh, the part with the lace in her skirt. So this is definitely something that we need to, to do now while there's still time, right? Okay, so there you go. This is better already. Brightening in a little detail in her skirt as well. Because the further you go on the right of the skirt, the closer the tonal value is actually to, to this one. There's no real delimitation if you think about it. It's nearly the same tone, although it won't be the same color, but like value wise, it's um, pretty much the same here in the skirt and on the ground. And uh, do we need to do much more? I think we can add some detail here into her blouse a little bit. And I believe that the highlight is the strongest on top of her shoulder, so then we can Brighten this up a little more and on this side as well, whereas on the contrary, we also have a shadow that is between her, um, her arm and um, the back. So this we can reinforce a little further and muddle in the middle va values here a little more. Right, so that we have something like this. Then go over once again where the shadow is the strongest. And there we have it. Went a little overboard here. Okay, now, what do we think of that? Do we need to, we need maybe to clear up the horizon line just a tad here. Well, this was more than just a tad, but never mind. We will drag it into the color. Yeah, 
okay here right I believe that this is a little bit a bit brighter than what we initially established here as well we need to clear this up a little bit okay then smooth everything out a bit more re-establish some shadows here there here um, have a little bit more of a middle ground in between here right paint this in a little bit more maybe darken this bit this bit here a little further and this line as well and oh yeah I've nearly forgotten we have a mountain here that is not that we are not seeing really distinctly but that is there so we go in a little bit here we, we will need to uh, brighten it up a little more but this is a good beginning and we go in with the whites once again and go in here okay okay and this is pretty much it now we might want to go over here just a smidgen more not here though here the border is pretty pretty sharp and then go into the whites again I believe to brighten up the sky to further brighten up the sky okay because it is really really bright it's nearly white in the photograph so we don't have to be afraid of overdoing it at that point this way we will have a better transition with the mountain in the background as well so this is not a bad thing for us to do at this point I will change my brush here there you go okay and um, you see we I'm going over the edge a little bit more in order to in order to blend it in better okay now I believe it nearly appears that I've painted over the border which I definitely haven't so yeah something like that something like that now maybe the very last thing that i would want to do is to go over here because it's not that contrasty actually in this mountain so i would want to blend everything in just a little more it's not that contrasty actually so there we go maybe re-establish the contrast between the mountain that is further away because the border really is very sharp here Up. and there you go
that's it for today guys. I hope you enjoyed this more detailed demonstration of how to correctly do an imprimatura. I would like to show you more next week when we are going to move on to the layer of colors. I'm unsure yet of how exactly I'm going to tackle this whole um, in real time thing. So I think I will split the painting up in several areas. So maybe something about how to realistically paint grasses and pebbles, the texture of the tartan and maybe how to manage the borders between the sky and um, the mountains. I'm... we will see. <laughs> At any rate, please let me know before next week whether you find this whole in real time painting too disturbing and, it, and whether you prefer um, time lapses. Personally, I wanted to go maybe more into, into the details of how I do things. It gives me more of an occasion to uh, go into brushwork, what types of brushes I use, when I use medium and things like that. So um, it, I hope this will be interesting for you. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me today and um, I hope to see you very soon in my next video. Until then, have a lovely morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. Bye guys! <laughs>